it's time for a sunshine lady in our coloring book. So today I'm doing a full page using only orange. Orange, I think we can all see that I'm wearing yellow. So let's go. Hey people, it's Temi if you're new here. I'm back again using the M Drawing Coloring Book. The coloring book and all of the supplies I'll use in this video will be linked down in the description box. But I'm excited for this one, so let's pick our yellows. I'm going into my massive 320 Ohuhu set and all of the yellows you can see, most of them on this first swatch card and also the fluorescent one on the final swatch card. But I'm just really trying to pick anything that screams yellow to me on first glance and then I'll compare if I see anything extra in the swatches after. And here are all of the yellows that we'll be playing with today. What a beautiful selection. Doesn't yellow just give you joy? I'm gonna put them in these pots and let's pick our lady. I'm using the M's Drawing Flower Girls coloring book as usual. And here is our lady from last time. It was a full page using only pink. I'm going to name her Rosalind Sakura. Thank you so much for your suggestions. And let's find an illustration for today. I'm going straight onto the thumbnail page and I've just decided after seeing the orange and the pink here together, it might be nice to include all of the monochromatic pieces I do on this one page. So on this first thumbnail page, you can see when I just did a freestyle one and then I used all 320 markers. But I think back to this page, it would be really nice to have like the blue one in the corner, a green one, a, a purple one, you know, all of the colors on the thumbnail page like this. So I'm feeling this bottom middle one. I think it's really giving a sunshine vibe, even like her cute dimples. I can see some flowers that could be sunflowers in the background. I think this will be so cute. So I'm going back to the thumbnail page to play around with some ideas. The first thing I'm going to do is to put a piece of cartelina on. You might recognize our pink lady, Rosalind, <laughs> because of the print. But if I don't protect the next page, that is how everything will just print onto the next page. So going straight on with the colouring, I always start with the face and it's interesting because this is exactly what I do when I do normal realistic portraits as well. I think when the face looks good and snatched, everything else can come together. So I've settled on this kind of bright yellow colour, but I really want to add shadows to add some contours to her face. I want like a medium to dark skin tone for her, but obviously monochromatic, you know? I've added this dark yellow that's even given off brown and it looks way, 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 way too dark. The thing about markers is when it's wet, it looks really dark and then it kind of dries lighter. So for the real thing, I need to be careful, maybe choose a more in-between color. But moving on to the hair, I really want to do like golden puffs with like some shadows. This marker, <laughs> a mess. Why is it just giving me puddles? I don't know. But I think that's the marker I will use for the leaves. It's the darkest color that I have. And it would just help with the overall contrast of the piece so that it doesn't look too one dimensional. And now for the flowers. The flowers, you know, I just want it to complement the piece. Yellow is such a bright, happy color, but I want a good balance of light enough flowers, but also a little bit of depth. For the top, I'm actually using the lightest yellow I have. I just want to go with like a free light kind of touch. I think with the vibrancy of the skin, vibrancy of the flowers, I think it'll add a really nice balance. Some of the darker yellows in this mix are giving brown, which makes sense, it's fine. Brown is definitely a darker version of yellow, but I still want to keep the joy and the essence and the brightness for some of these flowers while balancing it with lighter, medium and darker yellows. And yeah, here is what the thumbnail page is looking like. I have a lot of hope for the final piece. If we can go off of this, fix some of the mistakes, I think it can turn out really good. I have not chosen a background color. I found some reference pictures of some yellow flowers against a very dark background and I think it makes it stand out so much. So if I could use black, I think that would be really good or like a really deep blue. That could work really well. But since I can't, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But now let's get on with the coloring. And once again, I'm starting with the face. I bet if I do a compilation of all of my coloring book videos, I start with that exact first stroke. <laughs> but yes, I'm just covering it with this main yellow base color. And I try to follow the direction and the contours of the face. 
the markers dry pretty even generally but just to avoid patchiness and when i start to add deeper and deeper colors i just want to keep the overall shape of the face I think the first kind of contour color works really well but the funny thing about markers is it always looks darker than it actually is especially because i'm coloring this on a white background so it just permanently looks like i'm going too dark and up until i add the hair which will be like one of the darkest points in the piece you kind of have to foresee it in context if that makes sense but i'm just adding the lips going for you know this nude lip gloss kind of moment we can add the shine later and also giving her small small dimples now i think i'm happy with the face we can move on to the neck and chest and you can see that i'm coloring in one direction and it really does dry pretty even but you have to be careful to keep working on it while the ink is wet but you know adding small circular bones small small cleavage and we can move on for now to the hair. So I've started with this initial color because I did mention that I wanted like blonde kind of curls. B blonde curly afro puffs is hard to do period, but then doing it with markers, a mess, <laughs> a mess. In one of my previous coloring book videos, I'll link it up above, I did like a really cute blonde hair kind of curly moment that worked really well. But I think what works really well is using coloring pencils and i'm really trying to stick on just using markers so after i've got this base color that's kind of given ginger i'm adding some shadows and you know some curls and trying to go deeper when what would be closer to the roots and then also leaving space for the highlights but now i've realized that if i'm going deeper with the roots i should also go deeper with the actual cornrows right I don't know at this point i'm just piling and piling and piling and i think it's time for coloring pencils to save me <laughs> so i've come into my big prisma color set i'm just gonna pick a couple of yellows from here and the white as well and these are three colors i've picked and i just want to use it as small small highlights to bring back the lightest points that would have been hard for me to preserve in the first place on initial impressions, this isn't really even doing what I wanted to do, but uh, we move. Maybe I'll come back to the hair, but for now, let's go on to the flowers. And this is definitely the most nerve wracking part for me. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I love doing portraits. I love focusing on the subject itself. But these coloring book videos have really made me go out of my comfort zone. I'm here trying to do a background that complements it, a monochromatic background that also works well with Our Lady in the Piece. It's not easy. And so I'm using different reference pictures of different kinds of flowers. So I've put some sunflower kind of flowers there. I've also tried to do some daisies, you know, some traditional yellow flowers. And I know some of these flowers in the pictures will not be traditionally yellow. If you're familiar with my channel, I say this every single time. I don't know my flowers. <laughs> so you can't come and kill me. If I color something wrong, I'm sorry. But now that I've got a good selection of flowers done, I'm even hitting some with small, small shadowing, make it look cute, a little bit 3D. Now I'm going to move on to the background. So I'm quickly going to put washi tape all over the edges so that I can get a really straight edge. I've also overlapped some of the flowers a little bit so that the background is kind of within the piece. I don't know if that makes sense. And how cute is this yellow washi tape from Maisie Lane? Absolutely love it. So for the background color, I want to use one of the lightest colors. So on first impressions, I'm going to go for this one. But after I'm applying it and after the ink is drying, it's giving a little dull. So now I think I'm going to try the lemon yellow chiffon. And in comparison, this is the primrose, which is a little bit dull. And this is the lemon yellow chiffon. And I definitely appreciate the brightness that's coming from the second one. So that's what I'm going to use for the rest of the background. For the bits I've already covered in the first color is definitely not that deep. But see how much brighter this looks. I really hope you can tell properly on camera. But it's still giving a light covering, just a more vibrant one, which is definitely more of the vibe that I'm going for. And the reason why I've decided to do this background at this juncture is because I don't want the flowers in the background to end up looking too samey. I need some lighter flowers. I need some that will more or less be left white, like the daisies. So I really need a background covering to help me balance that so that I don't end up going too, too, too dark with some of these flowers and I just have a nice range of values. 
and after my background is done to help with the contrast to help make sure everything is balanced to make sure my eyes are seeing the right things I'm just using the second darkest color so having all these dots of brown all around will really help to balance the whole piece And now that my background has been of service, I'm gonna quickly take off the washi tape and we can continue with the flower colouring. Now I can go with some of the darker yellow flowers and I'm trying to do as much shadowing so I've put a lighter yellow in the middle of these flowers and then gone deeper with the edges. This is different for this time. So I'm also varying the colours I'm using for the leaves. So I have some dark leaves like I've already done, but I'm also adding some lighter ones dotted all around the piece. And once again, I just think it's helping with the balance. How many times have I said balance in this video? I'm sorry, guys. And it's time to use the fluorescent yellow, Abby. To be honest, I don't like this yellow. <laughs> I don't like it at all. And normally I try to include the fluorescent colors of all of these, but it's just not really giving today. Now for these big flowers. Me, I don't know the names of these flowers. I'm so sorry, but I wanted to do like an ombre kind of effect. So starting with the lighter yellow towards the roots, then adding a slightly darker yellow, and then this mistake. <laughs> I don't know what shade this is, but it's not the right shade. So I'm trying to save it and go in higher with the other ones, but maybe I can save it with the other flowers. For this one, I think it's a much better effect. It's more of the effect that I was going for, where it just kind of looks deeper in the roots, but then just this cute yellow ombre. The fact that I achieved this with just a few markers is very impressive. I'm very proud of myself with these flowers because for the life of me for time, I did not know what to do with them. But I just love how cute it turned out and we're not even at the white pen stage yet. So just imagine how with the white tips highlighted, just, just wait, wait on it, wait on it. And now it's such a good time for final details. I'm using one of the lightest yellows to do small, small detail inside the daisies because I can't just leave it white, but obviously I can't use a gray. I've also got some final flowers that don't have any color yet. So at this point, I'm just guessing. I think I've got a really good variety of values. So let's just do more yellow. <laughs> and now for the edges. This is where who asked me? <laughs> I think normally I'm quite good with edges in real life and in these coloring books, but I don't know what happened today. Firstly, I think M's really did a lot with these edges, but then for me to now use a darker color, it like overemphasizes it in not necessarily a good way. Anyway, we can all ignore the edges, please. But really, it's just a stage of final touches. I'm using the deepest color I have. You might remember from earlier, but it's the one that leaked when I was doing the thumbnail page. I'm using the chisel tip side just to go deeper, deeper, deeper. Let's, let's really get the shadowing going. And now it's white pen time. It's my absolute favorite time of all time using a Sakura Jelly Roll. Obviously, I have to start with the lips because lip gloss, lip gloss drawing glossy 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 lips <laughs> it's my absolute love so i had to start with that and look how beautiful like guys i can't even fathom <laughs> i think it just makes the piece come together so much i also made her necklace white did small small brows back to the shadowing for a bit but honestly the white pen I'm sure you can see why it's my favorite part. It's just the sharpest, sharpest highlights. And for a lot of these flowers, they don't really need the white pen, but just see how much it makes it pop completely. It just takes everything from looking a bit mm, to looking amazing, looking glowy, looking glossy, just looking way more three-dimensional. If you don't have a white pen in your collection, I don't know how because I have like 15. <laughs> I absolutely love the white pen stage, if you cannot tell. And now that I think I've done enough with the white pen, <laughs> time to move on to the top. Taking one of the lightest yellows once again, the other one that I don't use for the background and just doing a small, small ruffle. You know, I just want a cute style. Also leaving space for the highlights so that it kind of blends in with the material kind of look. 
and our sunshine lady is done guys guys i am so gassed initially i was actually gonna make this lady purple you know the face on you know it was definitely giving a purple vibe but once i saw some of these potential sunflowers in the background i was ready for her to be yellow i hope you liked it let me know what we should name her down in the comments shout out to my patreons i love you guys so so much and if you like this coloring book video you will love this one next